the Word was made flesh, and he lived among us. These words from the Gospel of John today will be very familiar to us Catholics, as they are words which many of us pray daily as we pray the Holy Prayer of the Angelus. At midday and 6 p.m. every day, millions of Catholics throughout the world pause for a minute or two and they pray the Angelus as a way of honouring the incarnation of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ in the womb of the Blessed Ever-Virgin Mary. We prayerfully remember and praise the humility of our God who sends an angel to ask permission from the young virgin of Nazareth, who responds with a wholehearted yes. Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, let it be done unto me according to thy word. This sacred scene from our most holy scriptures marks the beginning of a new phase in how God relates to us human beings. The second person of the Trinity, the eternal Word, Jesus, takes flesh in the womb of Mary. By her consent and by the wondrous power and overshadowing of the Holy Spirit. Jesus, God, then becomes one of us, one with us, Emmanuel, God with us in an altogether surpassing way. To pray the Angelus is to recount for ourselves as an affirmation of faith how good is our God, how merciful and how much he desires our good, even when we rebel against him and show ourselves ungrateful and outright disdainful of his gifts and his offer of salvation. Ungrateful and disdainful are two words that I might use to characterize our national broadcaster's latest blasphemous installment on New Year's Eve. Disdainful and distasteful towards the central mystery of our Catholic and Christian faith, namely that God took flesh, the incarnation. Ungrateful a word I might use because, by insulting our blessed Lord and our blessed Lady, they show no gratitude to the Christian people of Ireland whose compulsory license fee is used to produce this material which is offensive to our dearest held beliefs. They might well say to us, you don't have to watch it if you find it offensive, just turn it off. But because of the license fee, we are still forced to pay for it. They have, it seems, issued a half-hearted apology for any offence that might have been given during the programme in question. But the objectionable material is, I am told, still available to view on their website. So not much remorse there, it seems. This is just the latest in a series of attacks on the sacred, which RTE has participated in or promoted over the last number of years. Their propaganda first tried to convince us that marriage was not sacred, then that human life in the womb was not sacred, and now they push the line that not even God himself is sacred. One would have to ask, is anything sacred for those that run that media establishment? And all this propaganda forcibly paid for by the very people who find it objectionable. Is it not perhaps time for that media outlet to be defunded? Let it stand on its own two feet or fall not propped up by the money forced via the license fee out of the pockets of people who do not like, do not want, and do not need such poor taste and low standard media. 
So what can we do? Well, we could boycott watching that particular channel. Just switch it off. And we could make strong representation to our public servants that it is time to scrap the RTE tax, which we call the license fee. Those are practical steps. And the spiritual things we can do are things which the members of the church have always done when God and the things of God are insulted and mocked. We offer up prayer in reparation. And what prayer could we better pray than to pray the Angelus? If the Incarnation is mocked by those in that media establishment, then let it be praised and extolled by those of us who hold it dear. If you do not know the Angelus prayer, then let this be the year that you learn it. Pray it daily and thereby honour our Lord and his Holy Mother in reparation for the offences which programming such as that on New Year's Eve cause to our God. They have insulted and mocked the Christmas story. They have insulted and mocked the Christian faith. Let us pray in reparation. I invite you to join me now in praying the prayer of the Angelus. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, and she conceived by the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it done unto me according to thy word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt amongst us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that we, to whom the incarnation of Christ thy Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection, through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.